Here are 20 tips and tricks for Power World that you might not have known. For bosses, you might want to have two to three extra people helping you defeat the boss. This helps the boss get defeated more faster and is more help for you because the boss will target you and then you will die pretty fast, so the more people the better. Another tip I like to call edging the boss. Basically what you do is you have your Pokemon down, but before the boss tries to attack your Pokemon, you take it back so the attack does no damage, you throw it back out and boom, no damage is done and you get to attack more. So it's a win-win. Let's talk about PAL elements. The different elements the PALs have influence the type of damage they do. For instance, if you have a Leaf PAL going against a Fire type PAL, the Fire type PAL is going to do more damage to the Leaf PAL. Also another example is a Electric type and a Water type. I'm sure y'all want XP, right? Let me give you a few tips on XP. The first tip is if you have your Pokemon doing tasks for you, or aka your PAL doing tasks for you, it basically gives you more XP. It gives you XP and the Pokemon XP. So keep that in mind. Also, forcing your pal to fight other pals basically gives you XP and other Pokemon, or AKA your pals, XP. Also, another way to get XP is by building. You have to make the Fortnite builds like the Fortnite build ramp. Nah, I'm just messing with you. If you just build anything in general in Power World, you get XP. So keep that in mind if you want to build a base or if you want to build anything. It gives you like, it's like a side hustle for XP. Now this is where the big bucks come in. If you catch 10 of the same like type of Pokemon, like not the element, but the same Pokemon, like the deer for example. If you catch 10 deer, each catch gives you 300 to 400 XP per catch until you reach 10. Once you reach 10, it's going to lower the amount of XP you get per catch for that Pokemon or pal significantly. So, my tip is you go around and you catch 10 of each Pokemon. It's going to give you so much XP if you do this. Like, let's say in an hour, you'll level up like 15 levels. It is absolutely crazy. Bonus tip incoming! Whenever you catch 10 of the same Pokemon, it gives the Pokemon that you have extra perks not only does it give you xp but it gives it pokemon extra perks here is a base tip so what you're going to want to do is you're going to have specific bases for specific material farms for instance you're going to have like one base with like stone and wood they're going to prioritize on that so it's not going to get mixed up with all the other things happening and then you can have another base that farms all your berries, your wheat, all that stuff, the materials and food you need. And you can have another base wherever you have the mining ore or stone or something like that. For the ore base, what you're going to want to need is you're going to need the Bowser looking pals and you're going to need sheep, a sweepa, and some water thingy. So they will make the food and then the bowsers mine the ore and the sheep carry the ore to the crate you go there you pick it up and you go back to your base that simple this isn't technically cheating it depends on your opinion but if you want to catch the tower bosses you're going to want to attack the guards any guard you see attack them then go over to the tower once you get to the tower the guard should stay there enter the tower and then the boss fight will start Make sure to position the guards and the boss in between you, so the guards will shoot at the boss. Once the guards shoot at the boss, the boss will go in the corner of the arena, then you go up behind it, you throw a Pokeball in his back, it could be any Pokeball, use the normal one because it's like a 99.9% .9 chance to catch, so then throw it at the back and boom, you caught the boss. It has the same amount of stats and health that it has whenever the boss fight was going on originally. So. It's kind of broken. It's up to you if you want to use it. I just did it for a demonstration. This is a pretty well-known tip, but you can use your pals in your inventory to help you craft. Um, certain pals do not help you craft, but certain pals help you do other things around the base. Another basic tip, but this might need to be known by many people. Most pals you catch can be ridden, but you need to get a certain level to get their saddle. So they can be ridden, but you have to get 
to a level to get their saddle, then you craft the saddle, and then you put it in your inventory. Well, you don't put it in there. It automatically goes in there. It has no weight, and then it's just, it's there. So then you can just ride your pal whenever you just like bring it out. Let's talk about the map. From the bottom of the map to the top of the map. The top of the map is the snow. The bottom of the map is where I'm looking right now. So the bottom of the map, the bosses start out at like, decent levels but they're kind of low basically all the time but then as you go up you get the high levels you get into like the 40s if you want to get like a higher chance to catch like a pal make sure to do this whenever you get the pal damage which i'm not doing a good job uh so don't blame me but once you get the pal low enough you throw the pokeball in the back of the pal it gives you a high percent chance as you can see that was like a 20 something percent chance you threw it in the back and it automatically went up to 50. So throwing the Pokeball in the back of the PAL you are trying to catch increases the chance of the rate for you to catch the PAL significantly. So you might want to try it out. One PAL you might want to catch a lot of are the Vinxies. These things are basically like the EVs of PAL World. They basically, if you have the ranch unlocked from getting it from leveling up, you basically place the ranch down, then you catch the Vinxies, you put them in the PAL box, put them to work, and what they do is they go in the ranch and they gather materials. They will dig up pow balls, arrows, gold, any kind of those things. And you just get like infinite pow balls. Like I had literally like 300 like normal pow balls once. Did you know that there's actually a way to instant revive your pals? So what you're going to want to do to instant revive your pals. You're going to want to get a pal and it's going to be dead, right? Obviously. You're not going to put it in the PAL box, because if you put it in the PAL box, it's going to have a 10 minute cooldown until it fully revives. But keep the PAL in your, like, I guess, party, right? And then once it's nighttime, you go to bed. Once you wake up, the PAL will be fully healed in your inventory. No need to, like, even put it in the PAL box. It's just fully healed instantly. So you might want to try it out if you're about to go fight something. I don't know. Up to you. Here's a tip I wish I knew a lot sooner. So what I used to do is I used to take my axe and I used to break the builds I didn't want. If I wanted to replace the builds, I'd break it and it wasn't very good because you'd lose all the resources you use to build that material and you just lose it and it's gone. But I found out there's actually a demolition mode. I found that out probably on like day two. Like it, it, it was so annoying when I found out, but there's a demolition mode. All you have to do if you're on Xbox, you click the up on D-pad and then you click down on right look stick. And basically it lets you open up a mode where you can destroy builds previously built or you can replace builds with new builds. And what this does is it gives you all your resources back from that material. So you can take the resources back and place it somewhere else if you really want to. Last but not least, this tip is going to go to breeding. How you breed is you have to make a cake using like flour, milk, and eggs, that kind of stuff, right? And then you take pals that are already working on your base, you pick them up and you throw them into the breeding den. Then you put a cake in the box outside of the breeding den and they will start breeding and they will produce eggs. Then you can take the eggs and put them in the incubators and you hatch the eggs. So it's pretty good. Sadly, this is our last tip for the video, but this tip is yet again going to breeding. I have a few breeding pairs that give you some pretty dang good pals. If you breed a pin king and a bush, you get a huge rock egg. From the huge rock egg, you can get the Anibis, which is a very, very good pal to have early game. It does massive amount of damage if you can level it up properly. Plus, if you get a quivern, which it looks like a, it's like a rat mouse dragon looking thing, and a relaxosaurus, it makes a Gyarados looking dragon serpent thingy mabob. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Anyway, that has been it for this 20 tips and tricks video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get more tips and tricks videos or Power World videos in general. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.